Hello everyone and welcome to the Cafe Rongen Journal Watch where we review certain important or interesting radiology articles. This time actually we are going to focus on COVID-19 and discuss what the practicing radiologist should know. At the end of this 10 minute video, you will know when to image a suspect COVID-19 patient, what are the imaging features of COVID-19, how to manage such suspect patients in the department or center, and then how to disinfect the department or center after imaging a COVID-19 patient. Uh, there's an important disclaimer that is that things are evolving very rapidly so do keep yourselves updated and these are the various articles I've used as references predominantly AGR or ACR, or ACR articles and uh, this is the ACR recommendations for use of CT and radiography for suspect COVID-19 infections. So what are the symptoms of COVID-19? It presents like other viral infections there is fever, cough, breathlessness, flu-like symptoms. Now the most important history right now in India is the history of travel or history of exposure to known COVID-19 patients. But as we transition from a phase 2 to a phase 3 epidemic, uh, this history might not remain relevant any longer. Right now, RT-PCR is the gold standard for diagnosis as it has very fast turnaround times and is extremely specific. Uh, as far as CT chest is concerned, it has a good sensitivity but low specificity. So right now, when do we image a COVID-19 patient? The ACR guideline and the guidelines of other radiology societies is that CT should not be used for screening or as a first line test for diagnosis of suspect COVID-19 patients. Instead, it has to be used very sparingly only for hospitalized or symptomatic patients with specific clinical indications for CT. For example, if we want to rule out alternate diagnosis or we want to evaluate for any acute worsening of the clinical status, that is when we will do a CT, for example, to rule out pulmonary embolism. Um, again, if a chest radiograph is recommended, think about using portable units for radiography as they can be easily cleaned and disinfected. And this avoids the need to bring these patients to the radiography rooms. And finally, if we have to do a CT chest, then perform an HRCT chest without contrast. A contrast may be given depending on certain clinical indications such as a rule out PE study. So what are the imaging findings of COVID and COVID-19 actually the image findings vary depending on the timeline of the infection. So initially in the first couple of days, the CT is often normal or may show certain minimal opacities. But as uh, we progress from day two to day five to six, uh, we see the classic bilateral multilobar ground glass opacities which are often rounded and they have a peripheral, basal and posterior distribution. Less frequently, we can see consolidation along with ground glass opacities as well and this is more commonly seen in old patients. For example, here is a classic case where you see bilateral, peripheral, predominantly posterior ground glass opacities and you can see some of them being rounded. And here is another example again rounded opacities, bilateral, peripheral and predominantly basal. Uh, this is an example in which both ground glass opacities along with consolidation coexist. Um, what is uncommon in the acute uh, phase of the infection is effusions, adenopathy, cavitation or discrete nodules. If we see these, we should not think of COVID-19. Um, as the infection progresses from day 5 to day 14, the ground glass opacities will progress to multifocal consolidative opacities and often there may be organization of the pneumonia happening. So we may see septal thickening, crazy paving, reverse halo and signs like that. Uh, the imaging features may worsen to an ARDS pattern as well. So for example, here are different uh, images of different patients in the later phase of the infection. And you can see along with ground glass opacities in this case, certain septal thickening and fibrosis has started to develop. Similarly in this case and this case as well. Here you see subplural uh, linear opacities which have started developing and here as well we can see sort of resolving or organizing phase of the infection. Um, we can see reverse halo sign in some cases. Here, for example, we see the central lucency surrounding uh, opacity, the classic reverse halo sign. Um, this is an example of the same patient imaged multiple times, something which we should not be doing. Um, so it started with a subtle small focal ground glass opacity which progressed and new opacity started developing. Later on, multifocal consolidative opacity started forming and as the infection progressed, they became more and more organized. Uh, so this was done in the initial phases in China when there was a shortage of RT-PCR kits so CT started being used for diagnosis but now that there is no shortage CT should not be used for diagnosis for COVID-19. So just to summarize initially bilateral multilobar ground glass opacities with a peripheral or posterior distribution is seen predominantly in the lower lobes. 
Sometimes you may see consolidated opacities along with GGOs. This is more common in the elderly. And septal thickening, bronchiectasis, pleural thickening, subpleural involvement, these are uncommon but may be seen in the later stages of COVID infection. If you see effusions or adenopathy or cavitation, uh, CT halo sign, pneumothorax, these again are uncommon unless there is disease progression in the later stages of the disease. And uh, in the follow-up CTs, we can see increase in the ground glass opacities which then transform into multifocal consolidation and septal thickening and organizing pneumonia patterns. Um, after day 14, usually as the patient starts improving, there is gradual decrease and resolution of the opacities. Uh, this is a nice video which you can watch. It's by the Society of Thoracic Radiology and it uh, details out all the imaging findings along with the other findings of COVID-19. The radiology actually starts from around 30 minutes. So if you want to just look at the radiology, look at the last 13 minutes of the video. Uh, the important take-home message is that imaging features are non-specific and they overlap with H1N1, influenza, SARS, etc. So these classic findings, although they may be seen in COVID-19, can also be seen in other infections, which is why CT should not be used for diagnosis of COVID. Uh, instead, uh, even if it's a positive classic appearing CT appearance, we still need to confirm with an RT-PCR. So we should not be using chest X-ray or CT for diagnosing COVID. And... Uh, these are the British, Thoris, uh, sorry, British Thoracic Society Imaging Guidelines and what they say again similar thing uh, possible COVID-19 is when we see the classic pattern so again it's just possible COVID not definite COVID. Um, if we see non-specific or non-classic findings like non-peripheral opacities, effusions, adenopathy etc then we can call the CT chest as indeterminate for COVID. And if we see something like lobar pneumonia, cavitating infections or train bed appearance, we should think of alternative diagnosis and state that this is not likely to be COVID. Okay, now we come to preparedness of the radiology department and what should we do with vis-a-vis -vis patients, medical staff and equipment or environment. So starting with the patient, uh, the most important thing is to screen the patients at reception itself. Any history such as to a viral infection or history of travel, uh, should make us triage such patients, give them a mask and complete their imaging ASAP. Remember, often these patients are asymptomatic early on and can still transmit the infection. So they should be wearing a mask and their imaging should be completed as soon as possible. Uh, keep a census of any personnel who came in contact with such suspect patients so that in case any of them eventually turn out to be diagnosed with COVID-19, we know which personnel to isolate. Try to stagger appointments and prevent overcrowding in the waiting areas to allow social distancing. Limit the number of relatives as far as possible. Um, also, we know very well that, you know, when a patient comes to a physician, the instinctive response is to do a CT. And so we should ideally talk to the referring physicians regarding the need for imaging any suspect COVID patients. And uh, if it's just for diagnosing COVID, then we should strictly explain to them that the CT is not required or the X-ray is not required, they need to send an RT-PCR instead. What should the medical staff do? Obviously, if there's a known or suspect COVID patients, we have to wear all our protection. But beyond that, even otherwise in routine reporting, we must think of exploring options for tele-reporting, tele-consulting, and uh, see if we can segregate workforces. Perhaps ask half of them to work for one day and the other half to work for the next day. Because if one of them turns out to be COVID positive, then otherwise the entire workforce has to go under isolation. Uh, important to disinfect the workstation and desk before starting work. So use an alcohol rub or something. Uh, take it on tissue and wipe clean the mouse, the keyboard and the desk where you're going to sit and work. Uh, try to use shoulders or elbows rather than hands for touching common surfaces wherever possible. Obviously, once you reach home, have a bath and change clothes, disinfect your cell phone, specs, etc. So that you do not carry any infection you take from the hospital back to home. Uh, what about the environment? Whenever there is any suspect COVID-19 patient which is imaged, you must disinfect the appropriate uh, imaging tool used, be it the CT or MRI or the ultrasound. Uh, so when we image such patients, we must clean the surfaces with either soap or water or with a low to intermediate level disinfectant like alcohol. Uh, which is why it's preferable to use mobile chest x-rays again because they are easier to clean. When it comes to CT or MR of course you have to clean it properly. Uh, ventilation is important consideration for control of airborne transmission. So what the ACR right now says is that you may need to re leave the room unused for about one hour 
as uh, there should be enough time for any aerosol to pass on. But an NEJM article just published today after the ACR guidelines came out speaks of uh, aerosols remaining for around three hours. So I'm not sure whether the guideline might change to three hours or remain at one hour. So uh, decide depending on what you feel is safe for your environment. So that's all I had to say. Be prepared for COVID-19. It's, it's here and uh, hopefully we will be able to tackle it to the best of our abilities and be safe both at home and at the hospital and do not transmit this infection vice versa. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a safe few weeks ahead.